Hello everyone, it's Chad and today's topic is more specifically about decision making and what actually comprises good decisions. Okay, so I got into a discussion with someone earlier today, um, not Eric this time, but actually another person that told me uh, specifically that feeling in itself, introverted feeling and extroverted feeling, are uh, not good decision making functions. They're irrational is the argument they put up. Now normally I don't really respond to arguments like that because obviously this person is quite misinformed, but um, they're rational functions for a reason. They're, they're based in ethical reasoning. So someone who considers emotions, okay, someone who considers emotions is often associated with someone who is immature. I mean consider someone who makes decisions based off emotions. I correct myself there. And uh, whereas someone who makes ethical decisions is often seen as ethical. Ethical decision making doesn't is not synonymous with emotional decision making, okay? Because then you could put it in this words, in the words of, this person is very ethical does not also mean this person is very emotional, okay? So now, that being said, I do want to say when you make an ethical decision, you are considering emotions. You are considering the emotions of other people. You're considering your own emotions, but it doesn't mean that you act or make decisions off of that. You act or make decisions on what you believe is right or what is right for the better of the group. Okay, so, sorry. So, um, that being said, you have to understand that ethics is a, is a, is a very important decision-making process. This person believed that uh, ISFPs, INFPs, ENFJs, and ESFJs aren't capable of being leaders. Or they, if the only way they can become leaders is they improve their logical decision-making process. This is true. Logical making decision, um, I'm sorry, log logical decision-making is a big part of making good decisions. But likewise, and equally important, is ethical decision making. Okay, so it may appear logical to, um, let's say in a hypothetical example, let's say just we're using me for an example, okay? If I'm an ENTJ, my mind's eye has spent the majority of my life looking at logical circumstances and intuitive insight. That's what I've had most experience with because that's what I've been looking at. Whether it was developed correctly or incorrectly, that's dependent on my life circumstances, but that's what I'm comfortable with. And uh, let's say that I make logical decisions, okay? So, okay, so let's look at it this way. If I make a 100% logical decisions and I don't consider ethical circumstances, what do you think is going to happen to the team that I've built? What do you think is going to happen to the employees? What situation, if I'm leading an organization, say a company, is a is going to what is going to, how is it going to impact the team that I've created? Okay, is my team going to look at me in a way that they're uh, they think that I'm an ethical person? If they refuse or they look at me and say, you know what, he doesn't make ethical decisions, or he, you know, cheated these people, or he did this and to maximize business profit. According to some theories, business's only purpose in this world is to generate profit, and that is some capitalistic theories, which will ultimately result, that profit will result into contribution to society. Whereas other ethical theorists believe that business should be more focused on the overall contribution to society and not just profit. Which one of these is right? That's a question that we have to ask ourselves. Which one of these is wrong? And this is why this is an ongoing debate, because there is no true logical answer. There is no, yes, it must be this way, or yes, it must be that way. This is an ethical decision-making process, okay? So each company is gonna appear differently based on its contribution. There is no legal mandate, there is no guidelines, there is no stipulations on which one it is. If you remove the legal side of it, you obviously have this natural feeling of what is right and wrong. For example, let's say that I, do, I remove my ethical decision-making process, okay? And I'm making logical decisions. Now. Remove the legalities from this. So let's look at it in more of a practical example. I know that I, as a business owner, I want to make as much profit as possible. I want to generate as much revenue as possible. Non-profit or profit, doesn't matter. I want to generate as much revenue as possible. Okay. If I could commit a crime and steal a bunch of money from everyone, okay, and no, I would never get caught. Let's say that I had an ultimate plan and I would never get caught. Okay. Does that mean that my company will succeed? Does that mean that I will succeed? Does that mean I will live the days of my life okay with what I've done? Okay, these are ethical decision-making processes. It's not always logical, it's not always cause and effect. Yes, it uses reasoning. This is why it's a rational function, it's ethical reasoning. 
okay, it doesn't necessarily have a rationality to it, say that logic does, or is not easily perceived by logic, and this is where the clash is. But one is not independent of the other. They both need each other. When you're considering, considering logical circumstances, you're, oh, I'm sorry, you're also considering ethical circumstances. Okay, this is what type development looks like. This is why they've always said thinking and feeling are on the same polarity, and they are. As you want to consider circumstances, okay, from both angles. That's what makes good decision making. It, that's what is a good decision maker. A leader of a company um, can be any type as long as they've learned to balance these two functions. Okay, so a lot of times uh, capitalism and business and, and corporate America is ran by TE users. And why do you suspect? that there are so many ethical problems in the corporate world. Is it because these people are inherently evil? Or is it because they use logic and they rationalize their lack of ethical reasoning? These are questions to consider when you, when you think that the feeling function is unimportant. The feeling function actually is very important. And it's, it's equally important in business. It's equally important as in, in a leader position. Now, Granted, if you don't have logic, you can't organize. You can't, you're going to have trouble structuring the outside world and your internal reasoning. Okay, you're going, to have, you're going to have difficulty seeing rationality. Okay, so if you purely make decisions off of ethics, you're going to make a lot of wrong logical decisions. Okay, whereas if you make decisions purely on logic, okay, I'm sorry, you're going to make, uh, if you make decisions purely on logic, you're going to make a lot of wrong ethical choices. Okay. Sometimes it seems okay to be able to do something that because it's the best reason, it's the best, the most logical course of action. And uh, when I hear people tell me that, you know, TE or TI is, is the most important thing you can have in business, I often suspect that person lacks type development. Because as I've grown as a leader, I've realized that the mistakes that I've made in business were often related to my underdevelopment of the feeling function. And this is what type dynamics is all about. It's about embracing these weaker functions and embracing that shadow side so we can become better leaders and become better people and help encourage other people to, and bring them up. What really is a good leader? Is a good leader someone who just manipulates people to profit in a business? No, that's a manager or a boss. A leader is someone who raises others up. A leader is someone who selects people that are smarter than them or more capable than them in order to enhance the vision that's bigger than themselves. This requires a human element, okay? Ethics and the, the feeling function are the same thing. And this is one thing I've got to give appraisal to to socionics is for associating these two. My difficulty in trying to express this has been a, quite a challenge, okay? And oftentimes you're going to find people who have a natural dominance for feeling are going to be emotional starting out um, because they're considering so much of the human element. As they grow and they change, and they develop, they learn that the feeling function can be removed from actual emotions. It can be, it can be um, not removed totally, but it can con start considering those functions, but using ro logic to rationalize seemingly unethical choices. Maybe it's unethical to you. Maybe it's unethical to the rest of society. What approach do you take? Do you take a utilitarian approach? Do you take more of an egoist approach? Consequentialist approach? Non-consequential? consequentialist approach those are all your personal choices of what ethical standpoint you take but again what is the right one if it w if we could so profoundly choose which one was right then we wouldn't have all these debates of what is right and wrong but we can't you can't logically prove one is right or wrong more so than the other and this frustration came awareness came into my awareness when i started studying uh, the political system and uh, i realized that there is no right answer I've, I did a lot of studying and realized that the right answer is, is, there is no right answer. Some people got together that are way smarter than I am and formed this country, uh, the founders of the United States, and uh, they formed the country on what they said is not a perfect system, but it's a better system. Is there really a perfect system? Uh, if it were so logical, then we r would not have to worry about what was perfect because we could easily have, you know, something that was clear as day. One plus one equals two, right? That's so clear that that's the right way. But when it comes to involving the human element, this is where ethical decision making becomes very important. And this is my challenge with people who, who um, feel that feeling is just some kind of emotional thing. It's just kind of some kind of um, emotional issue that shouldn't be considered in business at all. I can guarantee you people who are walking around thinking that they're logical, and maybe they are, and they're, the ethics 
or emotions could, shouldn't be considered. I'm sorry, I'm like slipping over my tongue today. Ethics or emotions shouldn't be considered. Then these people obviously, to me, they appear as underdeveloped leaders who are in need of coaching in need of embracing part of their personality or maybe they have some stereotype against uh, the human element that's involved I can guarantee you these people don't have an effective leadership core they don't probably don't run work in business and if they do they're not doing very well and if they and if they happen to do work in business or own their business they'll quickly learn you know and I think we're all on our personal growth journey and we're all trying to learn and grow and change and become better people and I think that the decision-making process must include it must include logic and ethics to say that some of the most ethical people in the world aren't logical is also a very uh very misconstrued statement uh, some of the most logical people that i've ever read books on are very ethical as well or vice versa they've learned to balance these two functions and uh that's where um typology is often misunderstood and type dynamics is misunderstood yes you can't do one or the other you can't just make decisions based on feelings and yes you can't make decisions based on thinking you have to do both you have to learn to balance out the logic with the feeling you have to learn to balance it out you have to learn to weigh out the decision and sometimes the logic wins sometimes the logical decision isn't always the best one depending on the result i can make a choice to generate you know 10 million dollars you know on the right side but it's also going to cost you know these employees all their jobs okay and uh what can these employees produce in the future what are they capable of producing what human element you know what can they contribute you know what is the ultimate objective is the 10 million dollars more important than what these people can contribute in the future say that i keep these people on and i only generate five million do i generate five million now or do i generate five million in three years or do I generate an extra 20 if I keep this guy around a little longer or if this guy can contribute what does he contribute what kind of leadership am I going to pr prove what kind of people will I attract in the future if I've I've been known to fire you know or lay off a hundred million people or a hundred people or 500 people or whatever amount of people that I employ if I were to lay these people off and uh, because I, I wanted to generate more profit how is that going to result well, how will I be perceived by people in the future or employees in the future? Looking at my record, looking at my track record, people saying that I'm an unethical person. What kind of uh, impact will that leave on my business in the future? Do you see how these decisions are intertwined with logic and ethics? There is no independent decision. You can look at one side and go, yep, okay, 10 million is better than nothing, so I'm going to go with the 10 million. And I remove the human element completely. But there's a reason why human resources exist. And there's a reason why considering the human element exists and there's a reason why business many businesses are corrupt because they don't have proper type development and um they're not always making and sometimes it's not so black and white sometimes something seemingly so right can also be seeming so wrong and uh, sometimes people are unaware um i believe uh, there was a particular person i cannot remember his name right now i believe it's jack abramoff if I'm not mistaken, uh, committed fraud yet, um, and he, you know, served his prison sentence and his career is entirely ruined. But at the time, he thought he was doing the right thing. He really didn't know, and I and I would say he didn't know. Let me put it this way: he rationalized his behavior and thought it was the 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 thing to do because everyone else was doing it. And I think this was what really created a, a challenge for this particular person is because if you watch his interview, you can see how he looks back and goes, I should have made a more ethical decision here. And when he was hired to do this for this particular company, he said, I would never do anything that violates my own ethics. So what happened? Okay. The feeling function is absolutely critical. And I can't stress this enough. And uh, to make decisions without it is, is flawed, just like making decisions with just sensing without the, the big picture in mind or making decisions um, just on intuition without any details or facts to support it. The point of type dynamics is to embrace all four functions. Not one is inferior to another. And uh, this is, is absolutely mandatory to understand when it comes to type dynamics, is embracing each function and considering the human element, considering the, the, the facts, considering the, the ideas and the possibilities and the future implications, considering the logic, and to summarize this, you will see this in Myers-Briggs typology that it, a decision must move from the facts into the possibilities. What can, does this data mean? What does this data imply? What can we do with this data into 
logic. What are the logical pros and cons? What are the outcomes of these decisions based on these facts? What can we do with these possibilities? How do we do it? What decision do we make? And then considering the human element after that. It's called SNTF, uh, decision making procedure. And considering the human element at the end and going back and through the cycle again, looking at what is the best decision to make. There is no perfect decision. You're going to make mistakes, no matter how developed you are. Um, sometimes things are just too complex to have a right decision. But without weighing in the ethical decision, you are bound to make a wrong one. Thank you.